What in the hell happened there? I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> the stuff of legend. Bronze trophy. Lord, now. In the body of Elf or Man, you are unchanged, Kenneth Whoa. Oh, God, I gotta do this. Defeat Sauron. Ow. Sniping his ass. Double stab. No. Got a badass. Dude, I stabbed him in his ass. Did you see that? Oh, I didn't even want that. I did it by accident. Dominate Sauron. I serve no one. Oh, 
my god. What the fuck? Yes! He's broken! Get him! He's broken! Suck on Sauron! Suck on the Sauron! I did it! <laughs> Damn! Cut the ring off his fing the fingers. Uh oh. Hugs! Ultimate powerful hugs! What the fuck? Sauron and Calibrimbor became one. Oh my Locked god. Locked in the prison of perpetual war. A flaming eye casting its shadow over mortal. Talion had retaken the city of Minas Morgul, but his war was far from over. His greatest battle would be fought against the shadow within himself and the tower to the east. To hold back the darkness, to save the world of men. See? And this is the bullshit. The bullshit act. The endless grind, this should just be called. Grind for fucking seven hours or buy loot boxes. The game. So that's supposed to be the real ending of the game, and then this whole act of four is just to make you buy loot boxes. So you fucking will pay more money than 60 bucks, which you shouldn't have to do, in order to see the true ending of the game, which is probably a fucking two-second cutscene. <clears throat> there you go. So, you have defeated the Witch King and become the Lord of Minus Morgul. By the way, it's Gold Trophy. New skills unlocked. Raise the Dead and Ring Wraith. New challenges unlocked. Minus Morgul Fight Pits. Complete this challenge to unlock the Undying Loyalty Upgrade for the Raised Dead skill. And new legendary gear set. The Ring Wraith gear has been uh, obtained. The Land of Shadow. Minus Morgul and the Fortresses of Mordor are yours. However, the Flaming Eye above Barad-dur is fixed upon you, and the Lord of Mordor sends more powerful orcs to lay siege. Upgrade your fortresses and increase the levels of your followers, or dominate the higher level invaders and recruit them to strengthen your army. Keep Mordor in a state of perpetual war. Only then can the free people of Middle-earth prepare for the War of the Ring. The War of Shadows begins. The War of Spend More Money begins. Jesus. So, new inventory. And of course, it's the best gear set in the game. different armor sets. I thought they were all the same. They're not. They're all good. Look, Isildur's ring. Isildur's ring. There you go. Nobert just did a 501-bit cheer. Holy crap. And he says... This is a little off topic, but have I seen 
any kind of a pattern in regards to what games are most profitable for me. Funny ones like South Park, RPGs, open world, etc. Well, it depends. Like, some games are a lot easier to retain an audience than others. A game that has a, a strong narrative base or a lot of humor in it, like South Park, I'll get more people retained video over video. Versus, for example, a game like this, where it was a lot of gameplay, 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 and yes, there was story, but it wasn't a ton of story. A game like this is very hard to retain viewership over time, I found. Um, a game like Evil Within 2, that game was constant survival horror, so people liked coming back and watching that, right? Um, also, huge AAA releases always get more attention. For example, Grand Theft Auto games, um, you know, the big ones, the ones that everyone awaits are the ones that always get the most attention, and I know that. I know that when I play a big release, I'm going to get a lot of people watching, so... <clears throat> Typically, the longer the playthrough, though, the harder it is. The longer the playthrough and the more drawn out a game is, the harder it is to retain viewership. It's just a natural thing. Alright, well, let's see what this is all about. 